And things start off well with When She Was Bad. It's the end of the summer, and Buffy, Xander, and Willow deal with the repercussions of season one. This Whedon written and directed episode is one of my favorites in this season. This episode opens with a complexly simple scene for our trio of monster fighters. Buffy has spent the summer in Southern California with her dad. Xander and Willow have been wasting the time playing word games and eating ice cream. In the opening scene, the game becomes flirtatious. We can see the torch in Willow's eyes, and for a fleeting second, we see Xander reciprocate. Then the Chosen One returns. I have ambivalent feelings about this scene. It's charming, but it presents another frustrating facet to Xander's personality. Consider, in the pack, evil Xander openly stated his awareness of Willow's interest in him. Until Willow stops kidding herself that I could settle with anyone but you. Which means that our Xander knew about it as well. Then in Prophecy Girl, Xander was in an emotional freefall and tried to catch Willow on his way down. Yeah, no, we'll do. We can go. What do you say? No. Which seemed a bit manipulative given his awareness of her feelings towards him. And now in the midst of a Buffy-less summer, he flirts with the choice of going for Willow. Until Buffy returns, that is. Later in the episode, Willow tries to capture some of Xander's attention and fails miserably. In these early seasons, Xander is intensely driven by his selfish desires. I'm not dumping on him, by the way. This is one of the great successes of the show. Only characters we care about can frustrate us to this degree, and Whedon shows are expert at creating characters we love with deep human flaws. First scene, huh? It's gonna be a long season guide. Anyway, so Buffy is back, and she has new hair! Xander and Willow tell Buffy they buried the master on consecrated ground, and Buffy makes an odd statement about why she hasn't seen Giles yet. Have you seen Giles? Why don't I do that? Same at school. Stereotypically, school for teenagers is an ordeal. Buffy's association with Giles slaying in school is some insight into her feelings in this episode. Something is off. Buffy's dad says as much to Joyce. She was just, I don't know, um distant, not brooding or sulking, just there was no connection. The more time we spent together, the more I felt like she was nowhere to be seen. I still hate you, by the way. The awkwardness pervades Buffy's first conversation with Giles in the school halls. During her workout, we see her still fighting with her personal ghosts from the Master. Speaking of the Master, his flunky, the Anointed One, is still around and hanging with a vampire in need of a little foundation. The Anointed One's shiny partner hints at a new evil coming in three days. Later, they dig up the Master's bones, and apparently new evil means the old Master. After a particularly disturbing dream of Buffy's in which she's being strangled by Giles, Angel and Buffy say hello for the first time since the fall. Angel hints at the Annoying One's plans, and Buffy couldn't care Less. Later at the bronze, Angel tries to get close to her again. Buffy shoots him down and then pours salt on his undead wound by finding the only spotlight on the dance floor with Xander and performing a particularly provocative dance on him. So Willow now gets to watch her crush get slowly grinded on. Not content to burn just two people, Buffy dangles the possibility of a kiss to Xander. Did I ever thank you for saving my life? And then pulls the rug out from under him. Don't you wish I would? It may seem weird that the first and only person in the Slayer circle to call Buffy out on her crazy pants behavior is Cordelia, but remember, Cordelia is Buffy's path not taken. She is Buffy's shadow self, and the shadow self doesn't need the competition. You're really campaigning for Bitch of the Year, aren't you? As defending champion, you're nervous. Cordelia gets captured and dangled as bait to the crew. Giles figures out the anointed and sweaty ones are trying to revive the master. Buffy refuses to bring anyone along for the rescue, which leaves them all open to be abducted. And when Buffy finds out, Xander makes the most bizarre statement. If they hurt Willow, I'll kill you. Xander hits a few D-bag singles now and again, but this is pretty close to a home run. As someone who is supposed to be one of the more insightful and protective ones in the group, his response indicates a total inability to empathize with the trauma Buffy is trying to purge. Not only that, but Captain Hindsight seems to think that this is on Buffy, even though everyone knew the vampires were setting a trap, and no one figured it was for the gang and not Buffy. Buffy tortures a vampire for the location of her friends, she kills the henchman, defending the master's bones, while Xander and Angel save the gang. Then she gets her personal catharsis by grinding the master to dust. In the end, she regrets her actions and her friends take her back. Honestly, When She Was Bad is one of my favorite season openers. It builds so naturally on some of the brilliant character development in the past season, especially Prophecy Girl. I never once felt Buffy's Joan Collins tood was overplayed. She died in Prophecy Girl. Not only does being the Slayer isolate her from the people she cares about, but now she's experienced this personal trauma, which for her, until the end of the episode, can be no catharsis. Her friends can't identify, 
why. Her parents certainly can't. They don't even know who she is. She is in each scene choking on her own emotions and can't get out anything in their place. In the episode's most frightening scene, Giles is literally choking her to death. We've made numerous references to her friend's metaphorical roles in the show, so let's just get them out here and build on it this season. Giles stands for Buffy's mind, Willow her spirit, and Xander her heart, or strength. Spiritus. Spirit. Animus. Heart. Surface. Mind. The greatest evidence for these relationships so far is Xander. Remember when Xander was the first one to face his fears and nightmares? And then the episode turned around and Buffy won the day. You're my strength, Xander. All this adds a fascinating layer to Buffy's dream. The path to becoming the Slayer is the show's metaphor for adulthood. Giles, her metaphorical mind, was the one who convinced Buffy to step into her role as the Slayer in Season 1. So while Giles, her metaphorical mind, is the most insightful in understanding why she's going through what she's going through... They simply have what you Americans refer to as issues. Uh, her experience with the Master must have been extremely traumatic. Buffy, in her dream, sees him as killing her childhood. Making matters worse, her heart and spirit don't understand the consequences of the decision and literally ignore her in the dream. It's all such a wonderfully balanced episode, and with the exception of maybe Giles, every main character gets some juicy development, and there are a bunch of great lines. Come to the bronze before it opens, or we make her a meal. They're gonna cook her dinner? But my favorite thing about this episode is it's the first one scored by Christoph Beck, who brings a radically different vision to the Buffy soundtrack. Season 1 was incredibly synth-heavy. Beck brings a more melodic sound to the show that makes the episodes feel more timeless. Beck scored 58 of the 150 episodes of the show, but it's the sound he creates for Buffy's second season that becomes the blueprint for the rest of the series. It's a great start to the season, but there are still a few landmines to navigate before I stop bothering to give the episodes a watch or a skip. See you back here in a week for one of them, some assembly required. Some assembly required.